Oh, hello and welcome to another Budget Model Railway video and this time it's on my new exhibition layout. So uh, I knew we got something show coming up next year and I'd sold my 09 layout so I needed another layout. I had this bit of board left over from doing a summer house floor, standard 4 foot by 2 foot. Um, I had some timber battening left over from out of the skip. I have put grab rails in each end and the back um, which has made it much easier to lift. Now the important thing about this is it's got to be this size because it's the only size I can store in the shed. Um, so it's not really a question of how big I can exhibit or um, anything like that or how big I can get it in the car. It's where can I store it which is the mistake we made with all our other exhibition layouts. So that's why it's this size. Now I kicked around quite a few ideas in and all, 009 and all sorts of things. But what I really like is doing 00 and showing that you don't need a lot of space to do it. So I've gone back to the idea of doing micro layouts. Now I didn't have a track plan until I came across this, which was a very old track plan from the 1950s by the great Cyril Freezer. Um, and I realised I could adapt it. Now that was done for six foot by three foot. I've obviously done it for four foot by two foot. But the idea is still the same. So you have a pass, uh, a siding at the front here where you can store your passenger train the platform will go where the station is um, and then the two sidings here this will have a good shed and a loading dock and there'll be a sort of factory or mill there and then the coal stays go there so you get an awful lot of operational interest into quite a small area um, the loco is going around a little bit faster than it would normally. I've just uh, not long had it and it's just been running. But it means I can run three locos uh, at an exhibition because I can have one running around. The addition I've made to the original Cyril Freezer plan is to put a little short siding in the back, which will be behind the back seat, which means that this loco, for instance, can be stored in there. And then I can run the goods train, run it back in, or the passenger train and run it back in. Now, because I won't be able to reach the points at the front, I've tried, not done this before, this is wiring tube. Um, I asked lots of people where they get it from, but it was all a bit vague. Fishing shops, DIY shops, florists. What I really needed was somebody saying, this is exactly what you need to buy. However, what I've done is I've used the cabling, uh, the tubing that we use for th to, to 3D printers. And then I've this is 3D printer filament running through with just some little attachments made on the end to work, work the points and then I'll have to make some knobs at the back um, but it's worked very well um, even on the quite convoluted twisty one there um, they work very well they switch the points so that means I'll be able to stand at the back and switch those three points at the front so there'll be quite a lot of operational interest um, it's probably going to be a bit of scenery so again road um, over the top of the rear of the track and the siding, down through, level crossing here, road returning round there to feed the goods yard um, and the engine shed. So some retaining walls, some hills, level crossing there, but it'll be quite a complete little double O layout in fact. You'll be able to run three trains on it, goods train, passenger train and, and whatever you like. Um, you could almost actually run a timetable off of it. Um, it will only run the 040s, but as I've got quite a big collection of 040s and they're great little locos, that doesn't really matter. Um, so the curves there are actually only about 20 inches um, to allow me to get the siding in at the front. But it was quite interesting to find an old plan and just adapt that rather than trying to do a new one. Um, in fact, Cyril Freeze quite often said, um, don't try and reinvent the wheel. So it'll run off batteries there, which is what it's doing now. So I'm, I'm outside at the moment. It'll sit on these two trestles. Um, in fact, the trestles is the, that's why it's outside because there's obviously no room for it anywhere else. It'll be relatively easy to move around because of the handles. Very easy to set up. Just put it on the trestles and plug the battery in. Um, and then they'll have quite a lot of operational interest. So I'm hoping it'll be a really good exhibition layout. Um, and we'll get a bit of progress done on it. I am still working on the shed as well. And I haven't got until May. Um, the, re the ballast mat I should point out is just reefing felt, it's an off-cut of reefing felt again, um, which I think came from the tip shop, so not very expensive. The flexi track was some very second-hand flexi track, which took a bit of get getting right. I have found a slightly different method now, 
which is that I screw it in the middle, clamp it so it doesn't twist, bend it round and then connect it. And what I've also done is put some transition curves in using set track, some actually old Lima curves that I got from the, um, while we were away recently, um, almost brand new. So by putting them in, you get a bit of transition to the curves and that certainly helped the locos go round. But it'll be an awful lot in a small space, which is what I like to do. And it gives me then something to talk about when we get in an exhibition. It's just not just another layout. It's doing OO in the size people would normally do N or 009 um, with three different locos running, battery powered. So I think it'll be a really good layout. So that'll be for the Sompton show in May, um, unless of course we get any other invites. Um, but yeah, quite pleased with that. Um, and I'll do updates as we go along.